My special lady friend likes to live the luxurious lifestyle. We just got done with a bathroom remodel, so she asked for a bathtub shelf for a holiday gift. I couldn't find one that meets all of our criteria, so we're gonna make a custom one, but it can't be just any other bathtub shelf. I want it to look like a piece of art when it's hanging on the wall. We got this. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. Let's go. I got this piece of what I think is maple from a local farmer. It is rough on all sides, so we gotta surface it up. Our maple is all milled up, looking real good. I have this piece of scrap plywood here that I'm gonna make a prototype out of, because the tub is a weird shape, I just wanna make sure that it all fits. So I'm gonna set my blade to 45 degrees, make a few cuts, quickly throw this together, and then we're gonna go see if this fits. We're just gonna use a little bit of CA glue, quickly glue this up. So now we just take this inside and make sure that this does what it's supposed to do. So that does fit in there perfectly. We can move on to the real thing. And yeah, we will reinforce those joints. Even though I got a helical head on my planer, I got some roughness on my board here. So I'm gonna sand this out with my drum sander. So I'm just going to mark what's going to be the top. So I don't get confused. And we have continuous grain running throughout. I realized since my board is so long, it wants to do this thing. My sliding crosscut table that I made is not meant for 45s. So what I'm gonna do is clamp my board to my miter gauge to make sure it doesn't do that. And then every time I make a cut, I need to flip the board over to remove a little piece so I can have a continuous grain running all the way through. And then for the last piece, we set our blade back to 90 degrees and we'll just cut that to length. I made one little mistake. I got continuous grain on this side, but over here, I forgot to flip the piece and we lost our continuous grain. Is what it is. Kelly, just ignore it. I won't be able to ignore it. She'll be fine. I'll always see it. I also, I also, what I thought was gonna be the top is gonna to be the bottom. Both sides look good, so it doesn't matter. Angles confuse the crap out of me. I don't know what it is. My brain just cannot think in angles. It's like metric. Angles is like metric to my brain. Angles. To reinforce all these miters, I'm gonna use dowel joinery using the dowel max jig. I've got a video on this, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. I think this is the way to go. So, basically, this little guy is just gonna get clamped onto that, and then I can drill into there and use some dowels. What happened, Dave? I drilled on the wrong side of the small piece, so I gotta cut another small piece. And it just happened to be on the side with the continuous grain. It happens. So this time, I'm gonna mark the face that I should be drilling into so I don't make that mistake again. You gotta keep your head in the game. I just want you to know that I'm drilling left-handed just for the camera. I don't normally do this, but every once in a while, if you switch hands, it feels like somebody else is doing it. <laughs> I did it again. Even though I drew a line where I should be drilling into, I did it again. It's because these, this piece is so small. You gotta keep your head in the game. Just wanted to get this glued up before lunch. Angles. 
Well, that was a bummer, but I think I finally got it. All right, so now we can, now we can glue this up. I'm hungry. I know, I'm hungry too, dude. I had to cut down the dowels to a smaller size. I was gonna glue them in there. I'm wondering if my kind brother can grab me a brush out of the drawer. Yes, he can. Look at that, perfect 90. I don't even need clamps, bro, but I will use tape. Quite amazing how all those dowels line up. Lunchtime. How was your lunch? Uh, it was good, I had I'm gonna show you a cool little trick that I've never done before. Uh, but I'm gonna put a nail here and a nail here. And then I can use a little bendy ruler and draw a curve on here. And then we can cut that out in the back. Kelly is going to want to watch her shows on her iPad. So I got this aluminum iPad holder. It's magnetic. And so the iPad will stick right to that. I think this is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna route out a little pocket for this to just drop right into. I'm gonna line up my blocks and I got some double-sided tape. This bearing right here is gonna ride along that template that we just taped on and we'll cut out a little pocket. We're doing this in two passes. I got that first pass. So now I'm going to dial in the perfect depth here. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Don't even need glue. A couple little areas that I couldn't get in with the router, but we'll just do that by hand. I almost forgot the most important part of this whole thing. It needs a little place for the wine glass to go. So I'm just gonna drill a hole. I forgot to check the bit height. <laughs> and look at that. Just in case, just in case she wants a whiskey instead of wine, we're gonna cut out a little circle over here. And then maybe when she's not drinking whiskey, you could put a candle in there. Which way do I go? Do I go this way or do I go this way? It's always confusing. Depends if your rider's upside down or right side up or if you're going the inside or the outside. It's complicated. Yeah. We could totally be done with this, but that's not how I do things. I'm gonna go to the extra mile here. I wanna be able to hang this on the wall, and when it's hanging on the wall, I want it to look like a piece of art. So on the back side, I'm gonna carve in this design. It's like having a skateboard, you know people, Weird people have decorative skateboards that are just meant to hang on the, that's what this is. So it's, this is, except this is cooler than a skateboard. So I'm gonna use the Stepcraft M1000 here and I'm gonna carve in a design that I drew up. It's full of random patterns and shapes and colors. You'll see, this is gonna look good.
right, so we got that CNC'd out. I coated the top of this with some spray polyurethane just to seal the surface because we're gonna pour epoxy into the little pockets here and I don't want it leaching into the wood. This is our color palette. I don't have dyes for those exact colors. So I, brown, you just mix up a bunch of colors until you get brown. So now we're gonna use some Total Boat tabletop epoxy and we're just gonna pour it in there. Looking good, looking good. After the epoxy dried, I drilled some holes in the ends. This serves as a decorative purpose, but also allows me to hang it on the wall. Then I sanded everything smooth and applied several coats of thin down polyurethane. This was done to ensure that it would soak into the wood and seal it watertight. I then permanently epoxied the iPad holder onto the shelf. Before I show this up, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. If you're anything like me, a maker, a woodworker, a crafter, an artist, you need a website. It's 2024 and we should all have a website by now. Maybe you just wanna have a place for all your social media feeds. Maybe you just need a contact form for potential clients to get a hold of you. Maybe you wanna sell physical and digital items. You can do that with Squarespace. My website has been a Squarespace site for almost 10 years. I just redesigned it. It was super, super easy to do a complete redesign. With the Fluid Engine, everything is as simple as just moving things around, dragging and dropping and copying and pasting. I can change the entire color scheme with just a few clicks. It is that easy to set up a new website or to change up your look. They're adding new features all the time. Their templates are award-winning. You got 24 seven customer support. I'm telling you, if you're gonna have a website, it might as well be Squarespace. I used to be a professional web developer and thank goodness I don't have to deal with that anymore. Squarespace takes care of the code, the cloud, the backend, all of that. I can focus on what matters to me, and that's making these videos and keeping my website up to date. So visit squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, let's check out Kelly's new bath shelf. I think this is gonna work out just fine, although this might be more of a gift for myself than for her. I also think it's a little inappropriate that you're in here right now, so I'm gonna ask you to leave. But before you go, I wanna wish you a happy new year and let's kill it in 2024. Cheers. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.